Hello there. This is a short overview of the Tinkerjoy joystick. Be warned that this will show a mix and match of prototype and 3D printed pieces. The better it looks, it's probably the latest version. Please keep in mind that I'm not a YouTuber and I don't talk to camera often, so this video will have slip ups and mistakes and I'm not going to restart it. It's really difficult and it's not worth it. I don't know. Mute the video, put some music over and enjoy the images. Anyways. When I started the project, I knew I didn't want a big base for the joystick. Uh, all the big brands and high-end brands have these big bases that uh, get in the way and they just bother me. I don't like that. And I remembered I had this joystick uh, a lot of years ago that, had, that, ha that has this inverted system with a centering cone and all the mechanism is inside the handle and the base doesn't have anything, just the cable uh, going out. And I really liked that, and I was about to mod this, because you can take out the, these legs, but the joystick is so bad, I never got into that, because it's, it's I, I mean, it's not worth it, it's just that bad, okay, just believe me. Anyways, I, I knew I wanted an axle that I would grab somehow to wherever I wanted to mount it instead, uh, and then build my way up uh, to whatever it was going the joystick was going to be like it's rather different than what that i had in mind when i started uh i like it how it's I, I like how it's now so it's it's good i guess so from the axle i made a simple gimbal that mounts like this these screws are custom like i don't worry too much Okay, I told you I was going to fumble, just ignore that. Uh, if I need a custom piece, that because the shape, the size, uh, the material uh, needs uh, to be a certain way and it makes it easier for me, I will just make that. I will not uh, adapt too much to having to use uh, commercially available solutions. That brings its own downsides, but I don't mind. Uh, so this is the core gimbal. You can see, you can just rotate around easily. This is a pass-through for the cables that we, we will talk about it later. And it has another special screw. It's this one, it's just, it's the same as the other one, but it has a hole that has a, a magnet mounted inside. And it makes it, so it's, the magnet is trimmable. Okay, this is a prototype screw. It has very little in the in the mounting section, so I can I won't mount it. But you will believe the, the screw can go there. And there's one inside and one outside. And the hull sensor gets mounted just in front, and it will read out uh, whatever uh, position the the gimbal put or puts out, and it will work fine. I mean, for what I need, it's okay. So. You see the gimbal is uh, quite simple and how does it center? I mean you have by this time you have seen all the mechanisms and the photos but you haven't seen it working. So the big brands all use uh, how do I name it cams. They they use centering cams and springs and whatnot. And of course of course it's that's probably better but I don't like it uh, and it overcomplicates the system and th this would become so bulky that it would not be practical. And for my needs, uh, remember, this is uh, this is a pet project. This this the existence of it doesn't depend on a Kickstarter or a company or making money out of it. Uh, I mean, I will attack a, a Kickstarter maybe. Like there, I have had enough questions about it to maybe consider it. But I will make it, however. I really like and for me the centering cone that you can see here works extremely well and I can just exchange uh, since the, the way it's made I can just take out the, the, the centering cone and exchange it for a one for one with a different profile uh, I need a CNC lathe to experiment with profiles but uh, the basic cone will just work and will center the the mechanism easily and I can exchange the, the springs too. There's this piece 
uh, th this will get made in metal too. Remember, most most of it will be made of metal. Uh, the 3D printed pieces is just for prototyping. Uh, and this piece uh, will just uh, hold the spring in place, but uh, it also has adjustability for the spring alone. Like you can unscrew it and increase the tension on the spring up until the point that you will may want to change the spring for a shorter one if so or a longer one to have a greater base tension but that's uh, that's another detail like this is the way i like it and it's the way it works for me so it, it is what it is if you think that you would prefer a cam a cam version sorry just go buy bkb or or beer pill uh, this is not the joystick for you okay Anyways, so this is the, let me take out these pieces, uh, so this is the gimbal, to this gimbal, uh, I will just take this out and get another model, this is one, this, I think this is the lightest version of the, of the gimbal without the, the inner bits, uh, with the pass-through for the cables that come, that run around and come with the sensoring and whatever, to this uh, piece you mount this handle core uh, which way this way uh, that has that will have two bearings here the zeta magnet will go on top we will talk about it later and it have a it has a spring and some limiters inside that you will see later too and this is the basic core of the joystick and to this uh, part that will will also be metal i mean the 3d printed piece works fine uh, but it's uh, I have designed it uh, with uh, metal in mind, so there are some parts that are that are just thinner, thinner than than they will just hold right. I have played with it uh, with this inner part broken. It works. It uh, you will probably not notice, but uh, it will break. It will break and. Uh, this uh, this wall head screws when I talk about the mounting options for the for the panels, this is also a critical point that might get broken over time if the piece is plastic. Um, it's plastic if it's if it's three D printed. So I personally want it in metal, and it's designed to be uh, made in metal, to sort of being easily machinable uh, to an extent. I mean it's double sided and whatnot, but uh, that's a different concern. Anyways, so this is the this, this would be the base score as you see it, and it will have a lot of this. If I can find them, well, this is just fine. Okay, this is a, a prototype model of metal. It it's an older version, like um, with small changes. You will see later what it's what I mean. But this just sits like this, and you can see this ball head of the screws. Oh, one is one is loose. I can just use one instead, and you will see what I mean. So this ball head screw uh, for mounting the panels, I made a, me a mechanism that it's a retaining uh, O-ring that will just latch to the ball head screw, and I think it's really neat. Like if I can say so myself, and it has a lot of possibilities for for anything else, like. This is FDM, so it's not resin printed. It's not. It doesn't require such good precision. Uh, the the retaining is provided by the O-ring. It's a cheap O-ring, beaten in this case. You can see it's green, but you can also use uh, silicone O-rings for even a softer feel if you want. But the the latching is super satisfying for me at least. And this is how the panels. Like, let's screw this over again. Yeah, there's a joke there, but I'm not going to make it. You thought of it, okay? Let me take this out. And this is how the panel gets mounted to the joystick all the way around. And uh, with the panel, we will talk about the panels also later. Let me check my notes. I have talked about the handle core, the brake. Uh, ah, okay. I have to talk now, like. I need notes, like there's too much to, to talk about and without notes I just get lost. So uh, forgetting about the, the rest of the joystick, in this metal core apart from the ball head screws, 
this is the most modern version you can see it it lacks this piece here instead it has uh, this other mounting spot and you will see why just in a second so to this core this part here is for mounting the trigger block because the trigger is just a, a standalone piece that you can just change uh, make a new one a different one uh, in fact the current design could be better it works it works fine but I think I will design a, a new one just for for the sake of it if uh, to see if I can achieve a, a better a better feeling uh, a better spring return and whatnot you will see that the, that current uh, trigger block anyways uh, when I'm done with this so you can just move up and down the trigger block and also in this section you can mount a brake lever just like that it's a, bit of a spring just uh, the the, bigger, the the bearings just fell off so it's like it can move around but you get what I mean it's a brake lever but I don't particularly use a brake lever so I don't want it I, I, can, I can fully take it out and it keeps the shape a little bit cleaner uh, and I, li I like it better uh, but you, you can also mount something bigger if you want I, I really also want to experiment with mounting like a front guard uh, with buttons in it for example uh, like this is a, an experimentation platform so so I I, I, ju I just don't want to achieve oh this is the perfect joystick uh, for me and I don't want to do anything else why go to such a lengthy effort uh, if you are not going to keep uh, finding around what what can you do what can you achieve with it so I, this is a much better solution uh, anyways, what's the next note? Undercore. Okay, I have to talk about the thumb panel. The most important part of the joystick that, that you will interact the most. Uh, I have made uh, blank panels. I, this is the current design I'm using, but uh, current means, means nothing because I can just find another switch I want to try or another disposition of buttons that I can try. Uh, so what I have made is I have I have blank panels like this without anything and I have models uh, for buttons that I can just put in uh, merge them in some uh, 3d design program uh, edit around the shapes uh, just check that uh, that the volume the internal volume that it occupies just can fit inside the the, the, the available volume and just uh, make a completely different uh, joystick uh, tomb panel uh, to work with uh, let me see if... oh yeah, I have... this is a left hand uh, tomb panel for Star Citizen I wanted to play with the power triangle and I just made like a triangle of buttons uh, just because I can uh, is it worth it? I don't know I mean, it's just, uh, again, I say, it's just an experimentation platform. Uh, so, with that out of the way, an important part is how does this attach to the joystick? Well, at first I tried just using uh, ball head screws, but given the forces when you push the buttons, uh, only ball head screws will uh, just uh, detach. They will just twist around and move and, and it will just get out of the way and it ha it made for a really really bad uh, tactile feeling you could just you just couldn't trust the joystick in itself uh, so of course I had to, uh, to change it and I came with the, uh, this solution that you can see this C shape uh, and this other C shape here yeah this 3d print is really bad on this side I don't know what happened anyways so you can just put it in here, rotate it and uh, given that uh, if you put a, uh, here a pair of balls head screws it will latch on them but uh, this part here will provide biaxial stiffness like it won't rotate in this in this manner or this manner it will just stay here and the ball head screws will keep it in, in its place and that way you don't need uh, a screwdriver to fumble around with it like uh, 
oh, I just forgot to, to solder a button or I made something that I want to change from time to time. You just uh, pop it up. Uh, for example, you can just pop it up to change the height of the trigger, for example. Uh, there's a small detail with the current prototype that you can do this because I'm an idiot, but you will see that later. Anyways, that's part of the idea that you can just reach around to work inside or, or to move or to change the complete trigger uh, without using a screwdriver. Well, yeah, okay, you will need a screwdriver for this part, but how often will you work on an infum panel versus how often will you change the trigger? Anyway, that's just going in in a random direction. So thumb panel is okay. Uh, I have, I think I have already talked about the body panels and the, and the attachment system. So it's it should be time to pick, just pick up the, the handle core. Yeah. Uh, so this is the complete unit that you have been seeing around. Uh, the like a full a full working joystick that this is this is the current one that I'm using for for gaming Star Citizen and then things I want to talk about first it's an ambidextrous core so the core has these bars uh, that are for uh, making the hand rest uh, stronger like. Uh, you can re you can fully rest your hand weight on in it and it won't move, but uh, they can be mounted to either side, as you can see, and there are ball head screws on each side. So you can just like uh, if you design a funky piece, you can just print uh, it's uh, axially symmetric around the the ball head screw. So a mirrored piece will just mount to the other side without having to change anything. Or in fact, you can just turn around the same piece and mount it to the other side if you have a sample piece that it's uh, fully symmetric on, on no axis. Anyways, my current use is right-handed, left, right-handed, right-handed. Okay. Yeah, I don't distinguish between hard, uh, right and left. It takes me a bit to remember which side is size which. But anyways, so I can just like like that mount and latch the, the current uh, hand rest. Let me just take out this panel real quick. It's super satisfying again. So we have talked uh, about uh, how the cables go through the, the axle. And I had to restart the video because I totally forgot to talk about the magnetic connection. You see, uh, having a hard uh, attachment point uh, for the for any joystick, uh, especially one that is chair mounted, it just gives me gives me headaches. Uh, I'm I know I'm going to uh, move suddenly in the chair or turn around, and I'm going to rip up something or throw something, and I just don't like that. So I went with this kind of magnetic USB ports, uh, ports USB cables. There are uh, two versions, the well, three versions, but one is just power, so it doesn't count. This is There is one with seven pins and one th with uh, five pins. I prefer the seven pin one, uh, but there's there should be no difference. You could change one for the other. In fact, this uh, magnet, if it gets broken or whatever, it can just be popped out because this is the an, a micro USB adapter inside. It's not special inside, so you can just pop this out put a new one, connect it to the to the USB cable, internal USB cable, and be done with it. Like, it's super reparable. I mean, if you fuck up the, the axle, that's a different story, but in general, if it if it falls, it will break the magnet, but it, will, it won't touch anything else. By the way, this axle is stainless steel, so you won't have problems with magnetism and whatever. So anyways, it will just, the, mag the, the USB cable will just attach like that, and some people argue, ah, but this, uh, it, it's not strong enough, it's not, uh, it will just disconnect easily. And it's like, yeah, okay, it's part of the design. Again, I'm working based on what I really want. I, uh, For good or bad, I don't have to cater to industry uh, or to a large amount of people. It's just like, 
this is the best solution for me uh, because of course I can just take the, the cable out, I can just exchange the spring or the cone and just mount it back again in just minutes. I would say seconds, but it's like, yeah, find around where did I put the screwdriver and whatnot, but you get the idea. So the, this is the all stars here with the magnetic cable, by the way, to clean the, the magnets because some, some will complain, oh, but you have to clean them, just a bit of Plutac. You put it around, move it around, and it will, uh, any particles, especially uh, metallic particles, will just embed in it and it will leave a really, really clean magnetic connection. Uh, if you do it with this side, be careful because you can just embed a blue tag on the contacts. So don't, don't be as careless as with this side, but that's, that's just maintenance. I will just... Uh, and I forgot to close this cord and someone is talking to me. Sorry, I'm busy. Okay, that's done. So the USB enters through here. Some cables pass through here. Uh, this is one of the openings for adjusting the, the magnet, the magnet position. The other magnet is protected with this piece uh, that I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, make another hole with a rubber uh, cap on it or just leave it like that because how often are you going to trim the magnets so it's, I would this the internal one needs an, an access port but this external one you can just remove three screws adjust and put the, the cover back and and it will sit like that so at this point uh, it picks up the sensing of the two hole sensors and we have here a lot of cables that Red and black, power, 5 volts, power, uh, what were there, yellow and orange are just sensors, uh, blue is 3v3 for the sensors inside the core, and white and grey are USB ports, uh, also this black, this thinner black cable is for the, for the power, for the, for the sensors, so let's just that the way so this is the core you have seen it some photos with the cables inside and also if I remove this other panel as you can see no tools needed to remove the panels this is the set axis it's just spring with a pair of pieces uh, and, and pins to make the return to center it uses part of the core uh, part of the handle to do that you can change the spring to a softer one or a harder one but it's hard to do like it's a bit of a puzzle to get everything mounted uh, and it has to slide just in the right way uh, after all there's a really really limited space in here uh, but it works okay I, I the amount of force I can use uh, I like it's good enough uh, but I guess if I sold some joysticks, I would just make a video of me putting one back together so you can see how it does. Anyways, that's the, the Z-axis talked about. Let me color it back. Super satisfying again. Uh, what what was my notes? Yeah, the main board. You can see there's, a, there's an electronic board in here. This is not a pass-through, this has electronics in it. Uh, oh, it's special, it's uh, something weird and, and wonderful and whatever. No, it's just a blue pill. And then why not use a blue pill? Well, a blue pill just doesn't fit anywhere. Like, it has other issues, but mainly it just doesn't fit. Uh, there's no space, uh, not even in the width. Uh, I mean, in the width, may, may, may be able to fit just in here uh, but come on like uh, if it's just in there uh, soldering to it is going to be a nightmare and I it took a bit of effort but it's not just too much like also this PCB uh, holds the zeta axis sensor here just in, in these three holes because it's the best it's the best part it aligns it works very well 
But other than that, I removed uh, some bits of the blue pill that uh, FreeJoy, this is, this is prepared for FreeJoy, like you can do anything with this board, uh, okay, but I'm using FreeJoy and FreeJoy actually uses uh, the two 32 kilohertz uh, crystal pins as input pins uh, and it doesn't, it never uses the, the 32 kilohertz uh, crystal so you can just remove it to prevent uh, an interference and also remove the green LED that it's attached to C13 I think uh, and you gain three input pins uh, there's like a, a red LED that I, I didn't put in this version like I didn't just solder it but whatever and I have three more inputs so the blue pill is out and the uh, and the custom mayboard is in. So what uh, what are the, all these? So these round dots are input input and output pins. If you want, remember there's serious limitations about output power, but it can output signals if it's if it's needed. Uh, this uh, wedge shaped uh, dot um, pads are three v three, and this uh, the the square ones square like that I, I forgot the word for it sideways uh, rhombus whatever uh, it's uh, ground uh, why so many because you can just attach uh, whatever you want and then just imagine you make a new panel with a single button in a workplace you want to try uh, you don't have to make a rat's nest on on a single or, or, or a pair of ground pads with a lot of cables, of ground cables or 3v3 cables that you need so I decided I wanted a lot of mounting points for that and I didn't have to worry about uh, uh, needing power or ground for the sensors or, uh, or controls or whatever and that's the only special thing about, about it well it's also thinner but that's a special requirement for the from the design uh, the, the board is really cheap like the most expensive part is the is the controller because of the current uh, semiconductor industry crisis but whatever it will get cheaper so that's the main board uh, okay so you can see here the the trigger the the unused uh, brake lever this is the older design and and as i told you i don't use it uh, but I'm not. I'm just not going to change it. Uh, I can work with it. Meanwhile, I make the metal handle core. Uh, the trigger uh, is interesting. As I told you, I will change it mainly because the spring. The, the spring works. I mean, it works fine. It returns and, and it also has flip up. Uh, if you can see it closely, I don't know if the phone is zooming in. Uh, it's. First stage, second stage, and the flip up sensing, like that. Uh, I will change it. I don't know what I'm going to do. This version works, but it needs a bit of special pieces, a square piece that you can file down, uh, whatever. Uh, it's a module. I can just exchange it. It will not change the rest of the core that it's mostly, I would say, finished. Mm. Uh, the idiot part I was commenting before is that uh, when I was first assembling it with the new board uh, I got excited, I attached the tomb panel uh, with a new color and whatnot and I just put the cables, cut the cables and solder them and as you can see they are super short and now I just can't take out the tomb panel. I just can't lift it uh, more than a few degrees uh, if I take out the four the four ball head screws and whatever and I will at some point I'm going to make a new uh, thumb panel so I will just put longer cables reroute them and have it as I explained before being able to just take it out completely and do whatever I want to do and my notes say ah, okay yeah uh, colors like I'm just tired of black and grey uh, joysticks everything is black and grey maybe some color accents possibly but it's like they are all the same pay them more no I mean seriously it's like 
everything is the same. This color scheme, it's uh, it's trying to replicate to an extent my Kutlas red. Uh, it doesn't do a very good job, I know. Mainly the red is, uh, is too shiny. I, I need to find a, a darker red. So it, it gets a bit more serious tone, so to speak, and the white is too white. And it contributes to the to the same effect. But it's a start. It's a start, and I like that I have the option of uh, changing the aesthetics. Uh, even if I only print the same panels in a different color, I can change the aesthetics of my change the aesthetics of my of my joystick in a whim, and be happy with it. Uh, there's nothing much more. Yeah, I talked about the trigger and the brake lever. The brake lever just uses the same levering mechanism, dual stage. And I also made a, a small sensor board to make it analog. Uh, but again, I don't use it, so it's it's not in the in the joystick. And finally, I may talk about this experiment. These are plastic boots. Uh, because before I was using these are custom made. It's not silicone. This is uh, how do you name it? It's some form of some form of ink, plastic uh, for shirts that you heat up to one hundred and seventy degrees Celsius, and it will just like uh, turn to rubber. And I made an aluminum mold. Uh, this one is smaller than it needs to be. It's an, an experiment, and now I can have. My switch is protected with a rubber boot and I can just give it color or have something else than black and transparent. So it's a start. It's a start working in, in that direction. This my hat switch and a miniature joystick. And that's pretty much it. This is the joystick, as you can see. And well, next time you see a video, it will probably be some Kickstarter campaign or something, uh, I don't know. Just post any questions you have, I may answer, I may not if I don't see them because YouTube works in mysterious ways. But anyways, glad I did this video in one take, mostly, and see you in the verse. Bye bye!